Okay, people. Come on, come on, move it, move it. We have a deadline today, and we still don't have a front page story. Here's my article, Fräulein Caulfield. <laughs> kill, kill, kill for the fatherland? Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's no room. It's always the same thing, every week. Someday, things will be different. Mark my words. <laughs> Stop the presses. I've got a story that'll blow this place wide open. There's a rumor that there's a Nazi war criminal living with his family right here in Northridge. His grandkid could even be going to this school. I wonder who it could be. <laughs> what are you doing? Looking for a job. I want to take over the horoscope. Your Auntie Zodiac sucks. Not only was I not lucky in love this week, no new opportunities came my way. I did not avoid a painful confrontation with someone who knows. On top of that, I'm not even a Capricorn. I mean, this guy did not get one thing right. Now, he better watch it, or I'm gonna turn to another crutch, like alcohol or religion. Ignore him, like evolution has. Okay, people, we still have a hole on page 22. Elliot! Huh? How's your story coming? Well, um, it, the... <laughs> That's great, Elliot. So, it was Mr. Milk Toast. <laughs> Elliot Groombaum, can you feel the magnetism? He's been working on that same story since last semester. No, not everybody can write a front page story right out of the box. Maybe he just needs a friend. Yeah, so does everybody at Starbucks. Those mocha-drinking losers don't even have the guts to hang out at a real bar. The people at Starbucks have dug their own decaffeinated grave. This innocent needs me. I'm gonna turn this ugly duckling into a swan. Granted, it'll probably be an ugly swan, but a swan nonetheless. Hey, Elliot. Huh? Hi. Hi. <gasps> I was thinking maybe we could go over some of your ideas and see if we can't get them on the front page. It's great, Elliot. Boy, it's gonna be harder than getting an Egg McMuffin after 10.30 a.m. <laughs> Judge. Judy. <laughs> hey! What are you guys doing? Bit. Going. No. Where? Well, now that the applause has died down, Daddy, I met this boy named Elliot. He's on the newspaper staff, and he's, he's really shy and awkward, and... I want to help him make friends. Uh, honey, let me give you some advice. Life is too short to go around helping other people. And it's too long if you're Ted Danson. Daddy, I'm the most popular girl at school. If I don't help this turtle out of his shell, who will? Well, turtles don't belong out of their shells. You take a turtle out of his shell and he'll die. Then what do you do? I guess you could flip him on his back and leave him in the sun like you did to my pet turtle, Skippy. <laughs> That's the fanciest soup I ever had. I thought he ran away. Well, he tried. So what's up this week, Jack? Oh, well, Tiffany's trying to be nice to some loser by helping him out. You'll be surprised to hear it, Jack, but even I once tried to help a loser out. Say it ain't so. Oh, I'm not proud of myself. One day, a Cabbage Patch doll landed in the toy bin. <laughs> He'd lost his adoption papers. He was fat, freckled, red-headed, and ugly. And the mean toys in the bin called him Danny Bonaducci. Actually looked like him. 
Actually, it could have been him. You know, kids can be so cruel. I remember a time... Ah, I think this I... is my story, Jack. <laughs> I'd see him sitting alone, stinking of cabbage and cheap booze. I felt sorry for the kid. So I let him run errands for me, give him food for my plate after I was full, and when I had two girls, I let him take the pictures. <laughs> he was like a son to me, Jack. Floppy, that is a beautiful story of hope and redemption. Until... One day, he was trying to steal one of Floppy's ladies. He had to go after my eighth favorite. It's not like I ever wanted the rag, but it's about respect. Well, if that's the way he says thank you, here's the way I said you're welcome. I cut his legs off and put him in the potholder bin. Oh, that's gotta hurt. I like to think of him screaming silently as he heads face first into another tray of piping hot muffins. <laughs> you know, Floppy, it's no wonder the kids go wild over you. I'm the bad boy plush toys. <laughs> We're in trouble, people. We have no horoscope column. Harvey the Magi Wankrist was terribly injured in a bicycle accident. Coming through. <sighs> Hey, everybody. Gee, by my magical powers, mystic instincts, and lack of brakes, I sense Andy Zodiac has a cracked pelvis and a tire track across his face. And if he were conscious, I'm sure he would want me to take his place. Ryan, he would have said, take my place and be the new weekly periscope writer. That's horoscope. Fine, I have no other choice. All right, well, I'll do a special one for you. When's your birthday? November 27th. Aha. A secretariat. Sagittarius. Hey, just uh, leave the astronomy to me, okay? Astrology. Yeah, you know, because I'm the sidekick. Psychic. Just write the column. I mean, the rest of you people, come on. We have a paper to put out. Get out there and get me a latte and a Danish. And when you get back, make up some news. Like the LA Times. <laughs> Not so fast, Elliot. <laughs> that article you've been polishing is almost ready. Thank God we're finally alone, huh? Now maybe we'll finally get something done. <laughs> wow, Elliot, you know, you look oh. really tense. Why don't you go get a soda? You know, Elliot, nobody else around here understands you, but I do. With my help, we're gonna get you on the front page. Oh, here we are. What kind of drink would you like? Anything you want. Just, just make a decision. Come on, you can do it. Cola, lemon, lime, the sky's the limit. Oh, Elliot, you did it. You made a decision. I am so proud of you. Oh. Ryan, where's your column? Not so fast, honey. As the most popular thing in this rag, I demand a proper title. Isn't weasel enough? It's cute as a pet name, but I want a more important sounding title for my byline. I mean, all you do is write a lousy horoscope column. Yeah, well, I'm like a network executive. It's not about what I do, it's about what I'm called. I want a, a euphemism. I mean, the guy that put two guys, a girl, and a pizza place on the air isn't called idiot. He's the vice president of programming. I mean, it means the same thing, but it fools the chicks. Or whatever. Well... You'll be happy to hear that Elliot has a front page story. I worked with him for five days and nights. It wasn't easy. Since he doesn't speak, you kind of have to take charge, but I think that together we did something really special. Tiffany? He spoke! He spoke! <laughs> what is it, Elliot? You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you by law. You are suing me for huh? sexual harassment? Uh -huh. Now that's a front page story. I had to read it three times before I realized it wasn't about me. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you can treat us men like an object. We're more than pieces of meat, Missy. Thank God one booger-eating spaz had what we used to call the guts to stand up to two centuries of oppression. 
learn to keep it in your pants, Missy. How would you like to die in the sun like your turtle? Daddy, how could this be happening to me? All I did was try to be nice to a loser. Look, maybe there is a lesson to be learned here. Leave the miserable to themselves and spend your time with the popular kids. Losers are nothing but trouble. Why do you think they call them losers? I'm gonna fight this to my last breath in student court. What I need is a good lawyer. I'll say you do. Barbara volunteered to be the student prosecutor. Yeah, she would, that witch. Uh, she likes you more than you think. She appointed me your defense attorney. <laughs> yep. Ryan G. Malloy. Attorney for the defense. God, no. And by the way, Ryan, what does the G stand for? Justice. <laughs> See in court. Look, sweetheart, it's only a school trial. I mean, what can they do to you? What can they do? Daddy, if I lose, then goodbye newspaper staff, goodbye Harvard, and worst of all, it goes on my permanent record. That thing can follow you your whole life. <laughs> Go away. What are we, a cartoon now? <laughs> Get out of here, you bum. Your mother's a parking ticket. Floppy, I don't mind telling you that I'm a little nervous about testifying in student court. Have you ever been in court? Toy Van Court. Judge Punch and Judy presiding. <laughs> I killed a Tamaguchi. It kept buzzing, feed me, feed me. So I beat it. <laughs> then that do-gooder from social services, hello kitty, starts asking questions. The only thing that saved me was that I knew how to make hello kitty purr. <laughs> it seems what killed the Tamaguchi Made her come alive. Poppy, you are one heck of a psychopath. Uh, straight America has the Olsen twins, Jack. The cool kids got me. All right, give us a little room, please. Give us a little room. Okay, as my client's attorney, these charges are baseless. Now, if you'll excuse me, get that camera out of my face, buddy. <laughs> Sniveling loser. I'll teach you to drag my name through the mud, you dirty little. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> and you get the. <laughs> Northridge Student Court is now in session. I'll kneel for the Honorable Judge Caitlin Blackpool presiding. <laughs> How does your client plead? Usually by saying. Please, Daddy, I really need that sweater. He means not guilty, Your Honor. Ms. Caulfield, do you have any opening remarks? Yes, Your Honor, I do. I intend to show that my uh, client <laughs> wants today what he has always wanted, to be left alone, and that this hussy created an environment in which that was not possible. Indeed, where he could not function as a human being, he was forced to service her every ugly need in return for success on the school newspaper. Which, by the way, comes out twice weekly with news so fresh you'll slap it. <laughs> which brings us back to our case. For a crime this heinous, I insist that it go on Tiffany Malloy's permanent record. Mr. Malloy, do you have an opening statement? Yeah. All right, I'm not gonna stand up here and make fancy arguments that nobody, including me, understands. <laughs> sexual harassment. The dictionary defines the word sexual as of or pertaining to sex. Harassment is not a word that I can spell and as a result was unable to look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> but the prosecution's case is as thin as Callista Flockhart. <laughs> TV's Ali McBeal. Eat, Papa, eat. A waffle, a power bar, a button off the floor. I mean, sure, your hips and your butt are fat, but the rest of you looks like a Chinese noodle. <laughs> Irregardless of any of this, I was an eyewitness to this case. I was there. I saw the two of them. And my sister was touching him and whispering in his ear. 
She said that they would make newspaper headlines together. That by doing good, she would get something back. Now I ask you, with all of this going on, when could this so-called harassment possibly have taken place? <laughs> so did you see Tiffany Malloy making advances toward Elliot? She was advancing like Rommel's Panzer Division in North Africa. <laughs> and so, sir, did she or did she not say to you that she would bring this turtle out of his shell? Absolutely. May I remind you you're still under oath? Oh, God! You're twisting my words! You'll never get nothing out of me. All right, yes, Mr. Floppy killed a Tamaguchi. You ratted me out, Jack. I didn't, I didn't say a word. All right, I did. But she was badgering me, Floppy. Oh, she's running out of lies. I... Your Honor, I have contempt for this court. This is a kangaroo trial in a monkey court. No, Your Honor, you're out of order. And so you've never had an article in the school paper before? Well, the... the, the, the uh... Mr. Grimblum, would you describe yourself as shy? <laughs> this isn't easy for you, is it? <laughs> no. And so the defendant, the slattern, approached you and put her hand on your shoulder? <laughs> Could the court reporter read that back? Oh, no need, Your Honor. He said, <laughs> When will we realize that <laughs> means no? <laughs> and is it not true that you, and I believe these are your words, worked days and nights together, that you had to take charge of him, that together you made something special. And if you said that to me, I wonder what you said to him. You make me sick. All right. Bring it on, girly. You're asking for it. Oh, 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 I'm begging for it. You're aching for a break. And you're cruising for a bruising. I'm ready. You're not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> <clears throat> and neither was Elliot for this big, willowy bully. Do you have anything to say before we find you guilty and besmirch your permanent record? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes, I do. I was trying to be helpful, nice. Is this what America has come to? The, the persecution of the nice? We've reached a point where we're afraid to initiate any human contact whatsoever. Half the people in this country are married to people that they harassed in high school or the workplace. <laughs> the American family is built on harassment. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. Look at this, everybody's afraid to talk to everybody else. The girls are sitting with the girls. The boys are sitting with the boys. It's like some kind of Barry Manilow, K.D. Lang hootenanny. <laughs> America is being taken over by the losers. I say we should be ruled by the strong. Jawohl, I'm with you, Uber Fräulein. That's right, Umla. Let's face it, I wouldn't touch Elliot with a 10-foot pole, but let's just say I did harass him. Who cares? We protected the weak and the helpless for so long that they think it's their right. Well, I say the revenge of the nerds has gone on long enough. I say that the cool, the popular, the beautiful should take back the power. I mean, let me put this into words you can understand. Would you rather come to a party at my house Friday night, or would you rather hang out with Elliot and go to a party? <laughs> So if you've ever felt downtrodden because you're pretty or athletic or your parents had money, don't be ashamed. I'm cool. <laughs> Who else is cool? I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool as cucumber. I find the defendant cool and not guilty. Case dismissed. I won. I won. I won. Thank you.
Elliot. Do you want to come and get a soda with us? Yes. Well, you can't. <laughs> Have you been injured? Or have you dreamt of being injured so you can live off society's teeth? <laughs> or are you just plain bored and want to sue someone just for the heck of it? Well, I'm Ryan G. Malloy, attorney at law. The G stands for jury tampering. Even though Ryan Malloy handled my case, I still won. <laughs> yes, Ryan G. Malloy. The G stands for jailhouse shower toy. <laughs> Which you won't be if you hire me. Oops. Gotta go. Oh, Tiffany. It is I, Cool Umlaut. I'm here for the party. Tiffany? <laughs> <laughs>